752. We do welcome all of you, and I'd like for you to help me welcome my guest tonight, who is Mohammed Isaq. Assalamu alaikum, Mohammed. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Hello. How are you? So nice to have you here and join us on the program. It's nice to be here. Thank you for having me on, and I'm very excited. It's a long time coming. Oh, we're Definitely. Here We've been planning this for so many months now. But honestly, the timing's amazing. Um, a lot of us are, you know, wanting the recipe, the uh, sort of ingredients, the medicine, whatever it may be for love. But we're going to go into that in a few moments. Tell me a little bit about yourself first and what makes you have these answers? Well, um, I, I, I'd, I'd, I'd like to think that I um, all that I offer is a perspective. And I think that a perspective shift is sometimes what we need. Um, so myself, I am a born and raised um, Birmingham lad. Uh, and I uh, I think what, what my journey pretty much consists of uh, trying to seek knowledge, uh, trying to better myself. And in the process of seeking knowledge, um, it took me to many different places in, in many different um, countries as well. Uh, uh, and then as time went on, I uh, just developed as a as an educator as a teacher uh, and part of the teaching that i do is uh, self-knowledge uh, the temperament is out medicine um and a whole bunch of stuff to be honest um but really just seeking solutions to problems that many of us have in life and i think that's really the focus and i think that's the solutions that we need is just another perspective fresh eyes uh, you know things don't magically change but by knowledge we can see more you know and, and that's the kind of uh, the approach that i take Amazing. You were you actually mentioned the word magic. So is there a magic potion that you have when it comes to medicine for love? What is medicine for love? Explain to me. Let's define this. Yeah. So, you know, it's interesting that I think in today's time, we, think, we, we talk about psychology, we talk about mindset. These are like buzzwords in today's time and, and they indicate really a psychological frame that we're working from. But when we look at the, the idea of psychology itself, psychology is quite deep, right? Because traditionally the understanding is the study of the soul or the spirit so for us uh, and especially as muslims that our mindset and this whole framework of seeing things has to be you know rooted in that uh, theological or theocentric in, in that sense like rooted in god um and the tradition set by the prophet so when it comes to like you know psychology how could that ever be disconnected from those prophetic traditions and in a similar manner, when it comes to like this idea of medicine, when we talk about prophetic medicine, it was a massive part of the Islamic tradition. And how can we have mindsets and this psychological approach that's disconnected from Islamic medicine? So what we find is Islamic medicine, which is a study of, of, of the natural laws and the natural ways in which things work, and for human beings to find solutions by the natural order and, and, and as per the guidance of, of our tradition, well, why don't we, you know, in the same manner where we see a physical problem and we look at uh, solutions from the, the, the natural world, well, why can't we also find solutions to our relationships, which are fundamentally mental challenges? Uh, and why can't we find solutions in, in that sense? So for some people, when you take a more natural approach to things, it, it's almost like magic. And it's mostly because we've all been trained to have this, uh, you know, this modern kind of understanding that, uh, you know, it's like a, uh, it's an approach that we've never really tried, but when we, when we but it's, it's actually very simple sometimes. It's just a case of, like I said, perspective shift and perspective sh shift isn't rocket science. However, it's extremely powerful and that's called like the alchemic process. You know, this was something that, you know, the, the Muslims saw Islamic psychology and medicine as an alchemic process because outside nothing has to change, right? You can still be in the exact same situation, but you can go from you know, the power of it is going from saying, why am I in this situation, right? This, none of this makes sense to saying within one setting or, or one moment, you can go from that to saying, this is perfect. This person is perfect for me. And I understand. And all that alchemic process and that rooting in the Islamic tradition is fundamentally understanding the greater picture. That's the perspective shift. Like when you read Quran, for example, like, you know, how many countless occasions where we've been told about there's a bigger picture, there's an, an end result here, you know, and those are are great. Not, you know, not they're not simply coping mechanisms because we don't see it like that. That's not how our belief system is. Rather, we see that we open ourselves to the truer realities of things. 
And what an incredible mind shift when you realize, wait, hang on a second, what's really going on here is if I'm tested, and this is my challenge, this incompetent person who I'm supposed to live for, live with for the rest of my life, maybe, just maybe, all these lessons that will come from this one individual is actually all that I've been asking for this whole time. But I thought it'd come in this romantic form of, you know, you know, wonderful wavy locks, and <laughs> and instead it comes in this other form. And truly, you know, as as is as is reflected in the Quranic tradition, that perhaps there's something that you don't like, but it's actually better for you. And human beings, by knowledge, can actually come to know those realities. What a beautiful place, you know, Fahima. We had we've had conversations about this. How much stronger we become when we now know versus when we don't know. You know, alone. That's that's a that's like you know in Arabic. I'll give you a quick little um, interesting nugget. This word of fear, for example, like we, we're in a time where people don't want to be anxious, right? And fear is something that people kind of run away from. Well, in the Islamic tradition, what's fear? There's two words. There's khawf and khashya. And khashya is actually a, a good thing. You need to you need to have khushu in your prayer. And khawf isn't necessarily a bad thing either. So being anxious about your end goal and these types of anxieties are good anxieties. Maybe that's why we have anxieties and not for creation, but for the you know the creator and, and, and real like bigger issues but anyway but what's interesting about khawf and khashya and how you alchemize, alchemize from being fearful of a thing to still fearful of a thing what's the difference is that is khawf is a fear where you don't know and khashya is when you is when you fear something but you know it and what a difference that you know allah says about you know those people who come close to him that he says la khawf alayhim they don't get you know they don't have fear but they do have khash though and that for human beings is just understand, learn the situation that you're in. And you can go from literally being in this freeze or flight mode, or maybe even a fight mode, or maybe you're tap dancing in a fawn mode. <laughs> and you can go from all those modes to just saying, oh, everything is as it's meant to be. Right? Like, it's a very you know, philosophical way. Sorry, it's, are, a very philosoph it's a very philosophical way of looking at life. Do you think people are geared up for that? Do you think um, one no. of the steps to actually understanding this way of thinking and believing, and obviously with my psychological background as well, I, I understand everything you're saying, but I can, I can hear um, some people sort of, you know, trying to um, say, well, how do we even start this process? I mean, is what is the actual medicine for love? Is it just knowing? Is no. it just awareness? Or you know, is it also love is medicine? Like, how would you sort of describe it? You know, there, there comes a point in everyone's in, in everyone's journey. And I think Michael Jackson also, you know, <laughs> to quote Michael Jackson, I'm starting <laughs> with the man in the mirror. That everyone comes to this conclusion at the end of the day. Uh, it doesn't matter which philosophical position you take and whether you philosophize or not, right? Whether you think or not inevitably you face the reality that i am the culprit right? i am the one who's in my way i have the expectation my expectation which was false led to my dissatisfaction and only if i knew and i think that you know though the philosophical aspect you know the medicinal and the, the knowledgeable aspect is maybe not everyone's cup of tea however the the, what it leads to is where everybody actually concludes like yeah actually maybe i do need to have this perspective shift and mindset shift and i think that that is the point that that is like what is love is it, like this is what it changes and, and it's a good question that is then love this wonderful noun that we just expect will land in our lives or is it a verb which we choose to do and that's the end goal that the road of loving is actually the place to be versus magically it will fall into my lap and i i think that those are the kind of shifts that start to form and i also you know i i would say that you know you can't underestimate people if you have a real conversation with people using the right terms everyone gets it everyone's an intellectual when it comes to do you think you know, love is something that you know we <laughs> even kind of try to reach or is it between us is it within us i mean is that how you would teach um even understanding love before even defining it because it's not a thing uh, how would you define? You know, love. Is, yeah, love obviously has its, you know, its objective reality, and 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 it's important to understand love, and and, and so, I think that all these things lead to a personal question, which is where am I seeking things, 
that you know like am i seeking these realities that should be linked to god and should be linked to these greater realities and am i reducing them that i you know love uh, this streaming channel or, or this person or you know or this person i've just met for like two months like is that love and what is love and i i find it really interesting like, you can read imam ghazali's i think it's his 36th book in his ihya al-muddin fascinating book called love longing intimacy and contentment and i remember looking at this thinking my goodness everyone's looking for these things in everything love longing intimacy and contentment i mean half of social media usage is intimacy seeking and i don't mean you know in the crude man i mean literally looking for a friendship blocked by by a plastic screen <laughs> uh, and i think that ultimately what people are seeking and i think there needs to be like a, a learning of that so i think for a lot of people a lot of these answers are actually within ourselves and it doesn't require like this massive amounts of learning sometimes sometimes it's just a question to ask that will produce that perspective shift but of course we're all looking for love and and i think that the success of manifestation of what it means to be a human being will always be in that prophetic uh a prophetic way and i think that's the sort of stuff that i communicate and and try to um gear myself and others towards um yeah without... beautiful well you've given us such an amazing introduction and um it's actually taken us nicely on to our first break but you started us off very deeply and we're going to divulge much more in detail and in depth in a few moments so please do stay with us as we talk to Muhammad about the medicine for love and if you have any questions please do call in and I look forward for you tuning in when we see you at the other side of the break take care Asalaamu Alaikum, welcome to Questions on British Muslim TV with me, Mohammed Shafiq. It's so critical and it's so important for our younger generation to get involved in politics and run for office. Is this vaccine, the various vaccines, halal? No material which is forbidden in Islam is contained in this vaccine. So that's why it is absolutely halal. जो नालो आ सकिना लिहाज गोठ में रहता हूं बरसात बहुत ज्यादा पई घर बुडी या बच्चा वठी भगा से सिर बचाए भगा से कुछ न बचो जायो करी पियो कचो हूं पेट ढवलाए ता सिकऊ मानी करे अचे ती करे नथी अचे करे खाइन ता बचा करे नथा खाइन लटन बिना खणी भगा हूं पेरे उखाड़ा हन बच्चा बस तर तबा थियो आ खटा भी कान ने कुछ भी कान है बेवाया थी ने लगता हूं घर खाऊं असा के इधारे वारन दाल दिनी चावर दिनो गेहु दिनो खंड चाय दिनो साबुन तेल नाता हूं पेस्ट यूनियो तो बच्चरन जा तोलिया दिनाता हूं जे के तड़कराय असा साफ करे रेहा हूं बच्चा असा के हर चीज इधारे वारन दिनी या अल्लाह असा उनन के वधाई दो गेहु दिनाता हूं हर चीज दिनी तो असा के Assalamu alaikum welcome back to Single Muslim Live here on British Muslim TV where we're discussing the medicine for love a very very deep philosophical introduction by Muhammad earlier on and i hope that you took some note because it is really deep actually you know conversation and i think it, a lot of us don't understand that and we don't you know even look into it and the thing is i just want to ask you how do we show up um as people when we are looking for something like you know love at the end of the day because at the end you know we are all either single or in a relationship we come from either trauma or we come from experience whether especially rejection attachment bad experiences so that's where the problem is and then we look for love and when we say medicine it's like as if it's a healing right it's a healing love is healing medicine is healing so if love is healing why does it sometimes hurt so much and why is it something that people want 
but actually feel that it's such a fear because it should be healing, but at the same time, you know, it's it's really difficult to manage. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah. You know, um, there's a couple of things with that, and I think this idea of medicine and this this like medicine for love is as if we we have to go to like healing, and I think a lot of it medicine is more like restoration and kind of bringing a person back to this optimal that we are default which is more fitra related so what happens is we actually buy poor diets right from a medicine perspective from from, from poor diets we then develop poor bodies and in the same manner from a mental perspective by a mental poor diet which is the type of knowledge and i, I think that's why i kind of like started with this principle and this philosophical point because when it comes to a lot of this stuff you have to go to the foundations of it, the first principles, for example. And I think this is a really good question to ask people. And I, I remember I was asked this a few times and you know, by my teachers. And I remember it being like a really enlightening moment where the question was posed that how do you define love? What is love? And I think that before we get to the objective answer, a question worth asking is for people to recognize where they currently are in, rela in relation to love and how do they see love? And we got to this point where you want to look at how the Prophet Sallallahu saw it and you want to look at what does it mean, love. And, and fundamentally, it's to make sacred and to sacrifice. And that and this is a, a, a completely different shift to this idea of love is a receiving of love versus love is to give love and to love. And in a relationship, the focus on the other and what one can give you know, and these types of things will always be in the long term more fruitful than a self-centered approach, because that's not, you know, that can't be love. That's just, you know, a type of a pleasure seeking. The difference between giving someone pleasure and receiving pleasure, for example, what what a difference in reality. <laughs> it's like a person who keeps all the crisp packets versus the one who gives all of one's crisp packets away. That is, you know, an indication from from the motherly love and from that rahma aspect. And so, th so these are the things that that when we look at love and we look at our approach to it, really we have to ask ourselves is, am I seeing this situation as the prophets of some sorry? And am I aligning in behavior and aligning in approach as the prophet saw it? And some of us, what we end up doing is we, 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 all we see is this object of love and the object of love sometimes may be ourselves, maybe another person, but ultimately it ends with creation and that's where a lot of people have a lot of problem and all of us do to be honest as long as we can remember god and that higher reality in it we can deal with the thing that i love and i live for to just maybe not give me that full credit back it's still okay because ultimately it wasn't for you but if it was only for you for example or my love was only for a person only them and the end result being them then their response will be very difficult for me to deal with because I've put all my eggs in this basket, in this basket, but the eggs are supposed to be in the ultimate basket. So it's like that's the kind of uh, approach where, and this is this is all that you know. I I spend my time on really. It's it's aligning ourselves and checking where we are and how we can get to a more prophetic centered love, and that will always be an explora exploration of of how we're defining and how we're seeing things. I love that. I think that's really important. And I'm glad you mentioned that because I think that's why we get it wrong, because we are looking at modern day sort of Western values and society and what has been thrown at us as, you know, firstly, the definition of love as this thing where, you know, we actually have to receive and it's an outside sort of perspective. But at the same time, yeah. um, sorry, you want to say something? Go ahead. Yeah, well, look, Fahima, I'm just going to jump in here for a second it's just look at now i said so i said a, a physical diet right for our physical yes. restoration of, of, of love or, or our being for example our optimal health well in a mental sense if i understand love being from a romanticism idea right which was a whole movement that kind of crept into the to the western world and then you know we have many manifestations from hollywood to bollywood to you know all these types of uh, manifestations that we are being tricked by our mind because we think this is how it works you know it's so interesting that you know uh like there's so many um it, there's so many false realities projected uh, and it's so interesting it's like you can't even you know have somebody rest on your sho your shoulder except that it starts to hurt after a while <laughs> and no matter how long that they show in the movie that they do it for like two hours or whatever it, they, the, and this is closer to a reality and and this is 
this is the thing that I kind of bang on about in all anything that I try to teach, even to myself and to others. And what I learned from my teachers is getting closer to realities of things because romanticism alone. And if, I would highly rec recommend people to read about romanticism and read about that movement and what was once upon a time poetic expression of love related to the divine, right? Layla was an example, which Layla was like this, this term used for divine love, right? Or the object of the divine love. And and now it's like Layla is a real representation of, you know, shyster in school <laughs> or, or so and so that I met. And then people apply this divine love and the Rumi is applied to, you know, uh, and, and not to say that that isn't love, but it's like, because I did ask my teacher once, I said, you know, we, we read about a lot of divine love. And then we, you know, ha, should we should one love one's wife in the same manner? How does it work? And he said, I was going to ask loving, that because we are human beings at the end of the day with sort of very yeah. minimal way of living. And at the same time, even if we especially like men and women, maybe for a man, sometimes that could be easy to accept where that is not given. But maybe for someone and I am generalizing here, but, you know, we feel the need to be shown and to be spoken to or even, you know, um, sort of given sort of like, you know, gestures in that way. So does that take it away yeah. from it? Because, you know, it's all about the divine. Cool. It's all about this. So it kind of like gets you out of it in a way, the loop as to how to yeah, be. So this, this is what I asked him. This is exactly what I asked him. I said, well, well, hang on a second. Like, how are we supposed to see then worldly love if, if there's divine love and yes. worldly love and this classification alone? I, I, le I learned to turn about life when I started to learn this classification. And then he said, he said, loving the wife will allow a person to love God more and loving God more will allow a person to love the wife more because it is love itself, the love. The reality of love is, does that change even if you have sacred love or, or you know, the divine love or love for creation? And and ultimately, when you do love, like the Prophet Sallallahu loved, right, for Allah's sake, and then his love for people was incredible. We have that false form now where we say, I love you for the sake of God, so I'm going to give you criticism like or something. Thing like that, right? Like that's not that's not like sincere. We already know it. The moment a person says, you know, I love you for the sake of God, and it, sometimes it's like, wait, you loving me for me, <laughs> right? But the ultimate, I do love you for the sake of God, and as a result of that, I love how you do X, Y, and Z. And so you can still love, and you can still love, and walk around in daisy fields and hold hands and have all that wonderful experience, right? You just don't see that as the end goal because if the you know if the weather changes. You know, we shouldn't give ourselves a hard time with with whatever our picnic was meant to be. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so then those who have um, <laughs> less iman, yeah. less faith, less knowledge of their, you know, religion, right? Do you think then, then obviously there is the lack of the whole idea of relationships being a success? Because that's where it obviously comes down to. You know, I, I would I would never equate iman with knowledge just because it, it can it can lead to like dangerous conclusions for people because just because I have knowledge doesn't necessarily mean I have faith, right? Just because I know Aqidah doesn't mean I, I have that belief, that iman. So iman is a statement of the soul, whereas belief, i'tiqad for us is a certainty that corresponds with reality based on evidence. All my theology students right now are like, woohoo! <laughs> but, but anyway... <laughs> But but the point being is, yes, we are all a great moment to realize for all of us is to realize that all of my choices, the choices that I can make stem from the knowledge that I have. The more knowledge I have, the more choices I can make. But then where this are you getting that knowledge crucial. from? That's what I'm trying to say. Is it coming from faith? And if someone has less sort of like of that sort of direction, shall we say? going in that direction and yeah. seeking in that direction then doesn't that make a difference and that's why they would absolutely uh, they would absolutely need to seek knowledge that's why we were instructed you know not rabbi's dini iman or or rabbi's dini nur like there are other expressions of like increase me in light make me light make my bones light etc etc you know wonderful ex duas that we read but this command of seek knowledge because knowledge is that foundation to which then you come to know the truth then you can measure reality by you know uh, and, and start to see reality and come to know tr the truth but yeah people have to go to knowledge first go to sand sources of knowledge and then from there you can go into all these other areas of like okay in, in this as aspect like for example with medicine we've been ref referring to now a massive part of that like people may be thinking oh i do i just make analogies all day between medicine and 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 the physical world, like the mental world and the biological world. 
No, like what we have is we have these principles that manifest. And one of the most important things, I'll give you a principle in medicine, which is whenever you are trying to treat uh, a, a patient, you must not know simply the nature of the disease. You must know the nature of the person. Right. Basic. So when I'm dealing with romanticism, for example, as the disease, for example, I have to know the nature of the person because some people don't, already don't believe romanticism and others are dancing with romanticism every day. And that is important to come to know one's nature, a.k.a. one's mizaj, one's constitution and one's temperament. And that's where a lot of the focus then of the study, when people say, all right, Muhammad Isaac, yeah, you got us, man. You made us think about love. You know, where do we go next? Like, it's know yourself, right? It's to start to come to knowing, to knowing yourself and to understand what is my constitution and what am I inclined to? Because that's where my preferences are. And my preference, and we have like a really rich framework in this, you know, and, and it's really exciting to like when a person learns this, because you start to realize that all of us human beings are, we're like these chemical reactions. And when it's good, we have nice chemical reactions. And when, when there's like a friction, we have bad reactions. So what we need to do is become chemists, you know, somewhat and start to learn how do we actually, you know, when should I be this? And when should you, if both are extroverted, then there's a clash of who's taking tough spot in extroversion and in a, between a man and a woman. Wow, that's so scenarios. interesting, Mohammed. But you know what? We're going to come back to that because you've actually touched on something that yeah. I really want to go into a lot more deeper. But we are coming on to our another break. So please make sure that you are going to be staying with us as we're going to go into it again with a lot more in-depth detail. And inshallah, we will be seeing you in a few moments where we'll be discussing more about the medicine for love and you can join in the conversation and listen after the break we will see you shortly abdul muttalib the prophet's grandfather proposed to keep the name muhammad which means the praised one the prophet is a person whose illuminated face is used to draw rain from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is a sanctuary for the orphans and a refuge for the widows. It is your light that we need. Almost 150,000 Canadians a year will use a homeless shelter. These people need food, clothing, and access to basic hygiene. Fatima Zara Helping Hand is a non-profit organization with the goal of helping the underprivileged in Canada. Along with our active support for recent immigrants and refugees, one of our ongoing initiatives is to feed and clothe the homeless. For more than a decade, we have provided hundreds of thousands of hot meals to some of the most vulnerable and needy. We continue these efforts with several monthly initiatives. information or to donate please visit our website nurmuhammad.com Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back. And thank you so much for all of you guys that are joining us tonight here on Single Muslim Live, sponsored by singlemuslim.com. We love having all of you tune in and constantly giving us your support. And we really do appreciate even the engagement and interaction, any of your comments, and even just saying hi and things like that. We do actually acknowledge. So thank you so much. We are having a conversation about the medicine for love with our lovely guest, Mohammed. Mohammed, you mentioned before the break this word temperament explain explain more describe it to me what do you mean so <clears throat> this idea of temperament is really our natural uh, patterns of behavior this is part of a person's mizaj a person's, person's constitution so many people have referenced or 
I've heard in life this reference to a temperament, uh, maybe from a traditional understanding where people said that you have a, a garam mizaj or a tanned mizaj. So this would be like a hot constitution or a cold constitution. And this was generally seen from the perspective of uh, a biological sense, but there's a great amount of insight it gives when you look at what that means in terms of a mental aspects. So a person of a hotter mizaj, they have a particular tendency or a particular way of being versus those who have a more colder mizaj. And there's a great amount of self knowledge that can be understood when we look at this. But what's also interesting is the temperament, because it's so natural, it's a lot for a lot of us, it's our comfort zone. So, for example, we have these four major uh, temperaments, and each of us is a combination of all four. Uh, there's Latin terms, there's Arabic terms. I mean, I'm just going to give the Latin terms here so people can become familiar sanguine, melancholic, choleric, phlegmatic. And each one of us is a unique combination here of these hot, cold, moist, dry principles that would be used in traditional medicine. They also apply to the human being and pretty much everything. And once we start to see our unique com combination, we start to realize our, our behavioral patterns, that there are like 80% universal consistencies in how we behave. And when people are having this argument of, you know, how things should be, especially in the case of a relationship, because you deal with the nafs a lot, you deal with your own nafs and the other person's nafs, what, what that means is you're also dealing with your own comforts and your own preferences and the other person's preferences. So when you learn the temperaments, you start to realize that 90% of your problems are just a case of mismanagement of our temperaments. So th these are the classes that we do. And it provides a great amount of insight when start when you start to see those who are more of a, you know, of a more choleric temperament, which is more fiery in nature versus somebody who's, who has a more uh, phlegmatic temperament, which is a more cold and moist. Those Those are two different people very different people or that you have the sanguine who's an optimist and you have that melancholic who's, a, who's more of a pessimist or an idealist and what a clash they would have and so in this navigation of first coming to know oneself this journey of self-knowledge where people have these realization moments where they're like oh my gosh that you know i i thought it was i thought i would i was the only person saying that you know to you or you were the only person saying that to me but hang on a second you know when you read the material and, and you know the temperaments you realize wow like i'm just behavior behaving like my uh my natural self and maybe i should actually start to connect for example with the other person so some are more social some are more antisocial for example like a sanguine is a social butterfly a melancholic likes this space imagine on an evening a sanguine his husband says to his melancholic wife hey why don't you come out and she says uh, you know i prefer to stay in today in that moment there's two massive uh differences in understanding that can happen one is that it's just temperaments this is just natural preferences and it's not that deep but the wife may think that why doesn't my husband want to spend time with me at home does he not want to stay with me at home for example but he's a sanguine, he's a social, he just wants to be extroverted and go out and spend time, for example. And he would be thinking, does my, my wife not want to go out with me? And everyone's looking from their base temperament perspective. And when you learn temperaments and you realize there's a whole other way of seeing things that I've never actually noticed. It's like, wait, let me see from that angle. Oh, that's what you're trying to do here. This is how you're seeing things. And so this is a, a crucial part in the journey of self-knowledge and relationships and the medicine for love when you start to uh see it like this subhanallah the world changes that is amazing i love that example that you've given um however when it comes to that do you think that they have to have the same temperament or even over time we can adjust so that we can actually um because it's not about having the same or something which is completely opposite because i think that when you know yourself and you know the other, then you can compromise and you can actually be sometimes of the other or, you know, be like the other or do what the other wants and vice versa. Is that a possibility? Or do you think that that doesn't well, work either? And even how so do you it, know of yourself and the other person's temperament? I mean, what is it that you do in your workshops that we get to go there? Obviously, we're not going to do the workshop now, but can you give us some slight tips so that maybe we can get enticed to going? <laughs> <laughs> It's a very good question. And there's a lot of questions there, to be honest, right? And I think that as you asked, you started to realize that all of those answers were predicated upon the next question. And the next question, which led to the <laughs> fund fundamental question is, well, hang on a second. All of this really is, is based on, do we know ourselves first? Before we discuss what's an optimal way of being or 
should we have a, a, the same temperament? Should pe two people have two opposite temperaments? Opposites attract, but when you keep them together for a long time, it can get very irritating. <laughs> uh, people of a similar temperament generally flock together until because but that could be boring. Then don't you think? Don't you think that could be boring it, it, sometimes, it, especially if you're in a long term marriage? Be, it may it may not to be honest the one who says it can get boring is probably indicative of their own temperament right because that kind of shows <laughs> am i showing my amazing. temperament right now <laughs> right yeah so and it's, and it's normal and it's natural that there are those who would who would want to keep it kind of fresh whereas others would be like well you're here i'm here i have my role you have your role and as long as we can keep this going we build this institution of marriage but the other one's like mm, but i want to taste it i want to experience it <laughs> right and it's like well we experience <laughs> See, by establishing over 20 years and it's like no i want it now so these are two different perspectives for example so the first thing absolutely is to come to know oneself which requires a great amount of honesty and self-reflection most people people do like temperament questionnaires and i always say don't because what happens when people do questionnaires online fahima what they do is they tick they, they tick all these answers of what they think they are or what they'd actually like to be and I always love to say to somebody, just put like your sibling or a close friend next to you and watch them look at you like, what? Right. <laughs> and it's like, oh, hang on a second. And you have to be very real with it. So we do a series of questions. Uh, and then I try to catch people off guard with some subconscious activities. So people then kind of like, even when people stand, for example, there are those when, you know, with this question that you asked Fahima, there are those who would literally be like, come on, Muhammad Isak, tell us what we're supposed to do. And others who would be like, um so 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 uh so what am i what am i supposed to do again and it, the difference between a more active approach or an analytical approach etc cetera, etc cetera. and i think that that already i mean you know we can't cover so much of it today but those are the ways in which we start to have those discussions we start to look at so first of all come to know your own temperament come to know the other person's temperament read do a course whatever you know whatever the road is and once you have that then you can start to see where relationships actually um it because it, most people what what happens is the, the the couple met maybe in their primary or secondary temperament mm -hmm. for example so but we work at this kind of combination and then from that combination that's our place together for example but if we don't go there often enough we are just our other aspects where i'm just do 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 and you are listen 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 and i'm talk 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 and you're like quiet 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 and what we where we first find ourselves maybe a time that's gone now and a lot of healing in relationships is actually let's get back to that kind of you know that principle that i i share it's a, it's easier when i have the whiteboard <laughs> to show it but it's 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 super it's it's super simplifying these incredibly complex and dynamic human beings but there is a formula we have behavioral patterns yes, and what's really you know, we do this one module on like language and terms that we use and that's what you know really gets people because they're like oh my gosh yes i use that word all the time how long right? is there your are course? those who are more how long is your course for this so that um, people can actually go through that sort of thing or do you think there's different levels i mean even does temperament change i mean do they come at different phases and good. stages how does that work yeah, yeah so the the you know these are the questions that we answer in the workshop right i'll just answer it here quickly it's not that not that complicated the primary message of a person doesn't change there's a hadith, very interesting hadith that, you know, I, I've seen two variations of the, of this hadith, which says one says a rope and the other one says a mountain. And uh, along the lines, of, I'll just give the Okuma Qal Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that, that if you were to see a mountain uh, move from its place, move that it's, uh, believe that it's moved before you believe a person's nature has changed. <laughs> okay. Right? That if you were to see a rope, a rope move from its place believe that the rope moved and the I rope being that it's there for a reason believe that the rope has moved before you believe a person's nature now we don't what we mean here is contextually like the idea you know obviously we we as per the understanding of the teachers is that it's an indic in an indication of the natural what we call tabi'iyya and it's interesting for him that in urdu for example people people say you know aapki tabiyat kaisi hai Tabiyat literally is the same word, tabiriya. So what they're saying is, how's your temperament? When they say, Abhi tabiyat kaisi, they say, how's your temperament doing? Which I'm really sorry, but I don't you? understand that. So you're going to have to translate for me. 
<laughs> so so when so when people say like how 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 are you right so when they say like uh, you know how how are you doing or how are you getting on they use this word the bariya in in and there's many different examples i can give in tons of languages but it's so interesting that they would use this word that actually mm-hmm. means how's your nature what that's what they're asking right. they say literally yes. how's your nature like in arabic they say how's your state kayf al hal right? exactly which is your state but in, in in urdu there would be an example of like how's your nature doing and there's many different uh, examples when we say like an ill te- you know a, a person of a bad uh, a, a, a bad uh, t- uh, temperament things like that or bad humor ill humor Ill humor was the old word for temperament so when mm-hmm. they say ill person is that this person's got an imbalance and you know we're talking about relationships here but a lot of the times there's a massive amount of healing for people just to kind of get back to a balanced temperament and so there's all these toxic versions of each temperament as well which you know all of us have traits well <laughs> now that you mentioned that it's perfect time to sort of take a break and come back and sort of make sure that people are uh, taking notes i think we need a breather because it's so deep and it's so interesting and i love everything that you've said it's absolutely amazing to have you on the program so far it's just been mind blowing it's um it's a different level of understanding i think that's what it's about you know we we always look at things in such a surface way and things that are just thrown at us but the way you're speaking it's really even enlightening and refreshing to even listen to you right here right now so i think you know everyone that is just tuned in or you've just caught you know a bit of the show i would really advise you to rewind take a notebook and make sure you also take hamid isad's details we're going to also come back very shortly where we'll be getting some of his details and inshallah we will be seeing you very shortly to have another part of the conversation where we were discussing something absolutely profound medicine for love and inshallah we will see you in a few moments please don't go away and we will Assalamu alaikum welcome to questions on British Muslim TV with me Mohammed Shafiq so critical and it's so important for our younger generation to get involved in politics and run for office is this vaccine the various vaccines halal no material which is forbidden in Islam is contained in this vaccine so that's why it is absolutely halal Looking for the perfect place to host your next event? Giftos Lahore Karai Banquet is here to make your event mesmerizing for you and for your guests. Catering for up to 180 people with extravagant ambience for all kinds of events like birthdays, weddings, henna, family function or anniversaries. Indulge your taste buds with authentic and freshly prepared Pakistani cuisine on site and delight your guests with elegance. For booking, contact Giftos Lahore Karai. ada asante mi awasya ladha asang dado pereshan thyase asante bod achi vai ghar kho be ghar thiyase asan ju jayu kiri payu kuj na rahe asan jo sakhna sir wathi asan nikta hu ta bachcha asan ja mazuri kanda an ta khainda hu je na kanda an ta asan kadi chulo bhi na barinda hu asan sa ye majburi hu na ko hit betha hu achi khima dena ta khiman me betha hu asan ke atto milyo khaina jo sajo hi rashan milyo जो अस खाई जैमें हर शे मौजूद है उनमें थाव भी किचन जहा सजाई अस दिना अव अस भाइर की मेहरबानी आ उनमें बाल्टियन उन बदना अला उन भाइर के अं गंज ईद अस मदद कह Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to Single Muslim Live here on British Muslim TV sponsored by singlemuslim.com. We are here discussing medicine for love with the lovely Muhammad. And also this is the final part of the show. Please make sure that you do take advantage by rewinding back and watching because we've given so much so much detail and information. I've really bombarded you with questions and haven't finished yet. 
So, Mohammed, we were talking about obviously the temperament. What would be the next thing that we need to sort of, you know, think about when we are discussing relationships and obviously human behavior in order for us to understand, you know, real love and how to find it, not just for the other person to give us, because that's what we always think as well. You know, love is something that we need to receive from someone else. And that what makes us whole. That's what makes us, you know, in a relationship. And that's how we are happy. Because even psychologists nowadays in research is saying, you know, love is happiness. Love is medicine. Love is healing. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah. I mean, I already said love is science. So, but, but that's, a, that's me following, you know, a particular position from one of our teachers and yeah, love is to make sacred, you know, and and to connect to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, which is which is the ultimate love. And any love that's not, you know, connected to the divine, where does that where does that end up? So I mean, these are just things again to like consider and different perspectives. But yeah, I mean, like once a person kind of becomes aware of this idea of the of the mizaj and a personal cont contribution that one is unaware of to every scenario in in one's life, especially in the context of a relationship. Now, there's two places that we're in now. If you're a single person, you want to be asking yourself, you know, where do I go from here? A married person would ask, ask themselves where they want, where do they want to go? More important than that is ultimately our greater objective. The temperament that we have naturally is like the raw material that God has given, given us. Some of us are like the, the raw material is like wood, other, others it's metal. The nurturing, the akhlaq, the tarbiyah, whatever we you know the, the, the what we choose to do with our lives that will impact our our natures essentially is how we're finishing and and molding these these two raw materials they can't be finished in the same manner wood and metal are very different in their natures which is just like all of us so first of all we have to understand that you know and there's a beautiful verse where allah says in the last in the last time in al -Mu'minin that allah has purchased from the believers themselves this idea being that first and foremost, that, you know, we have an end goal with this, right? We have an end goal with our nature. And we're supposed to condition this to the best possible form that we can make of it. That is when people find their purpose. What That's when they find their passion. Because just, you know, Fahim, I, I, you know, I've seen what, mashallah, the amazing work that you do. And isn't it so interesting when a person does what is natural for them and what they love to do? Aren't they just like in, you know, cloud nine at that point? So this is so if that's in the case of um, of uh, uh, of of work, what about in the case of a relationship? What about when we're looking at how our relationships work? So that's the first thing is to just understand that I need to be this best version of myself that I can be by working on my nature and not giving in to my you know lower desires or my personal comfort spaces constantly and you know living in my comfort zone. But I have to develop. That's the first thing. And then the second thing becomes that when I'm dealing with this person or when I'm working with this person, I also want to bring the best out of them. So when these two best versions of, of, of two people can form this beautiful experience, whether it's a romantic relationship, whether it's, um, a, you know, a, a parent-child relationship, a, a, you know, a, a, a siblings, whatever it may be, friends, whatever. And that's where then this idea of understanding another, understanding their perspective, understanding where they're coming from and how we can best look after them, right? And how we can take care of them and, and open communication so you can share what actually is important. Because some people, you know, you, you said something very really interesting before. I don't know if it was in the break or, or uh, before the break where you said that, you know, many times we find ourselves having a, a surface level conversation, yet this seems to be more at the roots of things. Imagine when we're dealing with problems in our lives, we deal with them at a particular base level, a surface level, and we don't go into the roots of these things. What the temperament aspect does is it actually goes to the root of a situation. And what it reminds you are your roots. So when you tell the next person, you know, whoever you're involved with or you're looking to get married or whatever, you can actually be far more honest with them. It's very confronting. Like it's fun at the start. Everyone's all excited. Oh, you know, do you know your temperament? Yeah, oh, I think I might be this one. And we always say don't share your temperaments with anyone because it's nobody else's business unless they, they're close to you. But along with that, you know, it is important to, to, to remember that well, once you know that, Right, you want to be able to work on that, and as you work on that, you work with another, 
and in the process, you know, you you uh, you start to like take care of yourself, make the best version of yourself, make the best version of them, and hopefully the best version of your possible potential relationship. And that's hard work, and that is confronting, and that's why you know, as much as people laugh in the workshops, they also cry in the workshops. And I I don't think there's such a thing of of being real if you're not you know going to go to those two places. Um, and Would it be helpful for someone who has, you know, been in a broken relationship, like divorced, or they've been um, in trauma, or they've had a lot of rejection, or is it just for the normal person looking for a relationship, and or someone who is already in a relationship? Um, what would uh, would you cater for something like that in your workshops? Yeah. So, so the the general workshops, the knowing yourself classes that we do are like you know a default for for everyone. We literally have. I mean, I we had one one lady she attended and she sent me in like a, this voice note and she said, "I've never seen a workshop where you have like a hijabi and non hijabi, a niqabi, a convert Muslim, a non Muslim, a Muslim." You know, she said, "I just and different ethnicities." She, I said, I couldn't believe how universal it was and how you I got you guys actually did it. And it's a kudos to the team and these wonderful you know people that have formed from all these classes who now host the programs. You know, Allah bless them and, and their efforts, but it is for everybody. But we also do like specialist classes as well. So we go into like the mental health aspect alone, which is incredible for people who are who are journeying from their temperaments for healing. We have uh, the relationship classes. We have retreats. You know, we have uh, we have this summit that I'm doing um, um, very soon. I, I have I'm the worst with dates. Well, while I'm... you're actually talking about that, could you maybe share? Even I don't want to wait till the end in case anyone is actually interested. How do people get in touch with you? What's the best way, and where will they be able to reach you? Sure. Uh, so, um, uh, you know, most of the stuff that we do. So, you know, if you just like on Instagram, a lot of it's like regular. Most regular updates will always be on Instagram. Um, and it's it's pretty straightforward, you know. It's just um, Isak Muhammad, so it's my name with my surname first because that's just what we like to do. Uh, and then, <laughs> and then we, uh, if you follow the Knowing Yourself, uh, Knowing Yourself on Instagram, Knowing Yourself page on Facebook, uh, the website is. Um, oh, that's fine. We Muhammad can always Isak. find it. A Y O or something like that. Um, right. And then, yeah, there's a bunch, of, a bunch of links, but essentially there will always be a place where you can see upcoming workshops. And from there, there's anything that's happening. Like I said, we do retreats. We're, we're, we're really, uh, we're, uh, the next, I think, wave of work that I want to focus on is the gender aspect. So really, you know, kind of like people starting to see these gender dynamics in the you know context of, of temperaments and relationships. And we did something, we do like a retreat in Turkey called the Alignment Retreat. Alhamdulillah, we'll be out again next year. We'll be in the States, uh, in the USA, doing a tour next year. So we have some interesting upcoming things, but um, yeah, we also have a current sale for people, and it's a best time to get to nab like a, a good amount of courses for like a ridiculously like 70% off. You get access for, for six months. Um, it's actually the most we've ever put online like this to ever access. So um, don't sleep on it if you're interested. It's the best, most value for, you know, for your time being out there. And you also find that, you know, I got told. Now, off well, I'm glad I asked that question, because to be honest, it's really important. The work you do is so vital. It's crucial and it's very unique. That's what I think. And I think there's nothing like that that I've known that exists um, for the work that you do, and especially with the experience and knowledge that you have. So, mashallah, I'm really, really, you know, really, really honored to have you on. And we do have only about four minutes left before the end of the show. Can you believe how quick that's gone? And I want to make sure that I just get as much out of you as I can for my own medicine. So tell me uh, a few, maybe some, you know, words or something that you would like to share as um, sort of like a conclusion for the audience and anyone that's watching with regards to this entire topic. Yeah, I think a lot of it is just like, you know, just being honest with yourself, understanding the importance of knowledge, you know, all this conversation was rooted in seeking knowledge. You know, there's a wonderful dua that if I could leave anyone with anything is to just, you know, maybe just read this dua often for yourself, which is, Allahumma adina al-haqqa haqqan wa razuqna tiba'a that oh Allah show us the truth as the truth truly is and grant me the ability to follow it and show me the falsehood as falsehood truly is and grant me the ability to avoid it that this important maxim guides a person when working the temperament when working these various different different philosophies out there that we are exposed to and we are unaware of the nature of them and the effect that they have on us and you know it's like a person eating cheeseburgers up until a certain age and then all of a sudden the arteries are all clogged up and they're like well when did that happen 
you know, you might want to examine the cheeseburgers in a similar manner. You might want to examine the types of ideas and things that you're exposed to. And, you know, we have this rich Islamic tradition. And, uh, you know, I, I wish and I hope that this, if anything, it inspires people to just begin learning and begin taking, you know, reflection more seriously. And, you know, if we can start to do that as a community, we can truly like start to change ourselves. And we you know what happens when we change ourselves. Right. That's, Absolutely. That's if someone is start, trying to start off, what would you recommend would be the first thing, either a book or um, a, some sort of like, you know, lecture to look at or a scholar to listen to? Um, what would your recommendation be? I know it's probably taking you back a bit, but how would you sort of go about starting that journey? I think if anyone's like genuinely interested in the books, you know, there's a, a bunch of books that I generally recommend. There's this book called The Temperament God Gave You. It's from a Catholic tradition. Um, so, you know, just be aware of that. But other than that, you know, you can still take, I mean, you have to understand you're not, you know, you're not studying theology. So you can, it's a temperament related book. It's, it's really interesting. Uh, in the Catholic tradition, by the way, they, 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 were, they would study temperaments for six months before a person got married. Wow. So, well, we have imagine. a lot to learn yeah. generally. And you know what? We've learned a <laughs> yeah. lot from you today. So because we've come to the end, I just want to say thank you so much for being with us today. It's been absolutely amazing. Um, really oh, so uh, appreciate it from all of us here on British Muslim TV. And we hope to, inshallah, have you back and also to hear, you know, more about your stories, especially with people that you have, you know, um, worked with in the workshops and really, really um, appreciate your time. Honestly, it's been absolutely phenomenal and really, really profound to hear you speak in the way that you do. Like I said, I've not had a guest um, mm -hmm. so far on this level. So thank you so much, Mohammed. Really, really appreciate it. And um, Very kind of you. <laughs> No, honestly. And also to all the viewers, thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate your time. And also keep sending in your comments, your sort of, you know, emails. We do receive them. I do try and uh, respond as much as I can. If there's anything that you require, please do reach out. But we will be back same time next week. Hope you have a lovely night. And inshallah, we will see you next time. Take care. Salam.